Hi guys, it's Nick here with the Whip Shop, and in today's tutorial, I'd like to show you how to make a three-pass, six-by-seven Turk's head knot in what I like to call a lightning bolt pattern. Now, as you can see, this knot is unique in that it does not cover the end of the whip. So if you're a whip maker that likes to use conchos, emblems on the heel knot, this is a knot for you. I hope you enjoy this video, and here we go. Alright guys, here's the whip that we're going to be working with today. Um, here's the knot foundation. So in this video, I'm assuming that you already have this much done. If you don't have this much done, uh, please view my how to make a snake whip tutorial. And I give a pretty detailed description on how to uh, get to this point where you have a foundation. Okay. Now for this particular whip, um, I have here a concho and it resembles a 1935 half dollar. And I think that's going to look really nice with the red and uh, black accented knot. All right. So let's get started. Let's get in focus. Okay. Um, first of all, you're going to take your primary color that you want. In this case, um, it's going to be red. And I've cut seven feet of parachute cord in red, mm -hmm. and I gutted it and threaded one end into my permalock needle, okay? So let's get started with the knot itself, okay? Just make sure I'm in focus. I am good, okay. We're gonna start like this. And take the opposite end, hold it with your thumb, and cross it 45 degrees. We're gonna go over the top, around the back, like this, okay? and over the front. Oh. As you can see, um, especially in this case when you have a metal um, concho or the end of your knot, it can be a bit slippery. So don't pull it tight or it'll just slip right off just like that, okay? So just just a loose, not loose, firm is, is a good word to put it, okay? You're gonna go around the back just like that, okay? So once you went over this one, you're gonna go around the side and up over. So now you have two sides of a square that you want to make, okay? Hold this with your index finger. We went over this, coming around the back. Hold it with your finger. And now here, we're going to go under, okay? So let's get our needle. We're going to go under here, <clears throat> okay? Now don't Resist the temptation to pull tight or else it'll just slip right off the end, okay? So just snug, okay? So you still have um, two two sides of our, uh, of our square here. And we just went under here, okay? So we're going to wrap it around and we're going over. And up here on the back side, we're going to go under, okay? So there we go, just like that, under. Pull that through. And we're going to go over the top like that. Now we have three sides of our square. Okay. So we went over again. And now we're going to go over that one and under this one. Okay. And holding again right here with my index finger. Over and under this one. All right. Once again, I'm not pulling super tight, okay? So I don't want the knot to slip. Just enough to hold it in place, okay? All right. So now we come around. Sorry, I'm getting out of frame a little bit. We went under this guy here. We're going to go over and over. So two overs in a row. Over, over, under. Okay. Okay. 
All right. So over, over, under, over the top, right there, and under. And once we complete under this strand here, you'll see and you'll notice that we have completed the four sides of our square that we were aiming for at the top here, okay? Look at that, see? Four, four sides there. Four sides, four corners. So we went under this one, and we're just kind of doing the opposite of what, what we see here. So you can see it goes under there, it goes under there, so in the middle we'll go over, okay? Makes sense, go over this one, under this one, Okay, pulling that through. Once again, see if I pull too much, it'll slip, and we don't want that. Okay. So once we get to this point, uh, we have here in front of us a single pass 5x4 Turk's Head Knot. Okay. And um, what we're going to do now is we're going to expand it from a 5x4 to a 7x6 and a fellow I need to uh, mention uh, by the name of Derek Pulsifer he, he put out a video and did a very good job of explaining this method of expanding a 5x4 to a 7x6 so Derek awesome job on that video if you haven't already watched that video uh, take a look at it It'll, it might help you and uh, he did a great job of explaining um, this what I'm about to do here so okay so here's a 5x4 single pass Turk's Head Knot. What we're going to do is expand this now, and we're going to follow our lead strand that we started with, okay? So what it does, we're simply going to do the same thing, okay? See how it goes over? We're going to go over with it. See how it goes under here? We're going to go under with it, okay? Just like this. I'm going to try to do this slow for you guys, okay? Now we've gotten to the top here. What do we do now? Well, we're going to go over, over, and under here, okay? So we go over these two, over this corner, overlap both, just like this. And we're going to follow our lead strand, except now, since we're descending, we're going to follow it on the left side, as opposed to following it on the right side, okay? Over, over, like this. And we're going to go under, just like this, following it on the left side. And this will make more sense once I pull it through. Once again, don't pull it tight. All right, see that? Over, over, and then under. Now we're following that strand again. Whatever it does, once again, we do, but on the left side. Here's our first example. We're following it. So we went under, and we went under with it on the left side. It goes over, we're going to go over with it on the left side. Down here at the bottom, it goes under, so we're going to go under with it on the left side. <clears throat> okay. Okay. Now at this point, we're going to go do what we did at the top here. And it's a little bit hard to see because of the light, but you remember we went, we overlapped these two strands here at the top? Right here, we overlapped these two. We're doing the same thing at the bottom, okay? There's two strands that you can see right here. Sorry, I, I'm even having a hard time seeing. I have to hold everything upside down so it's not normal to me. So we have these two. We're going to go over these two. And then we're going to split our strands so they go over on each side. Pay close attention. I'm going to do this as slow as I can. Here, let me give you one more look at this. We followed that strand. And just watch closely. I'm trying to make this as slow as I can for you guys. Over, under. Okay. And now we're splitting 
those strands, the side-by-side -side strands. Okay, see this, how they go right over here? It looks sloppy. We will fix that on our descending pass, okay? Splitting these two unders next to each other, we're going to go over, okay? Now up here at the top, let me get it in perfect focus. These two strands here, we're going to split it. We're going to go under. Okay, just like this. All right. And go over this one, split it over this one. Okay, so over, over, under this one, just like that. Pull that through. And your strands will try to twist on you. And we're descending, doing the same thing. Two strands go underneath right next to each other. We'll go over, under to pull this one to the surface. Okay. And here we are at the bottom. Just watch very closely here. Over. And we scooch this one down, and it'll expose the strand underneath. We're going to go over, and over, and under the strand. You kind of have to dig it out a little bit, okay? And there it is. So let's pull that through. And there you have it, guys. We are now at the point where this is a 7x6 Turk's Head Knot. Now, at this point, you're looking at it. You're going, what am I doing? I've just completed this step, and it's a mess. Well, it is a mess, but it's not difficult to get it coordinated again. What you're going to do is you're going to rotate this knot and just get everything evenly spaced. Work on the top here, okay? I'm going to move these strands around and try to get it so everything is even on the top. You want a nice hexagon shape at the top, at the heel of your whip, okay? So just move things over with your thumb like that. Just try to get everything centered as nicely as you can. Okay, now we're going to move the nut, lay it on its side. We're just going to evenly space everything out, okay? Evenly. See how big this is and how small this is? We're going to move this over just equalizing everything. We want all these little squares to be about the same size to get the knot as even as possible. So let's do that. On the top here, make sure that, just try to get it all on the very edge here, okay? And it doesn't have to be perfect. The last stages of getting the knot coordinated and everything will follow shortly okay just get it rough estimate okay that's about all you need for now average at this point we have finished the seven by six Turk said not and it's time to follow that lead strand again okay so here's where we came out we're gonna go we go over this one under this one. Now this is a point where you can pull it snug, you know, just finger tight, okay? Pull this heck out just to tighten everything up a little bit. At this point I like to straighten out my strand just to get it so there's no, or I shouldn't say no um, twists in it, but just try to even out the twists and get it as even as you can, okay? Now from here on out, we are following this. No more splitting strands, no more confusing overlapping and stuff. We are following this lead strand here on out till the knot is done, okay? Here's our lead strand. Let's just follow it all the way till the end. It goes over, we'll go over with it on the right side. From here on out, we're following the lead strand on the right side. No more confusing following it on the left hand side. Here it is goes over, we'll go over with it. Goes under, we'll go under with it on the right side. Okay? 
All right, and don't resist that temptation to pull tightly. You want everything loose as of now because it's gonna get tighter once you add more passes on this knot, okay? All right, over the top. I'm just following the strand, everything it does over, and here it goes under. And I'm just doing everything it does. Over and under. Untwist my strand. I don't like pulling twists through, it makes it much harder. Okay. Little tug there. Over, under, following it on the right side. If you have any questions on this, if you want something clarified, feel free to ask in the comments. I had a terrible time learning how to make knots. So don't feel bad if you feel like you need to ask. Don't feel stupid at all because I felt the same way when I was learning and I just needed it explained very slowly. And I still have trouble with knots sometimes. I'll look at it and go, what did I do wrong? And I'll have to take it apart. Okay. Following that leader. Literally doing exactly what it does. Full time. You might find that the knot is a little bit loose in some places, it's okay. Pull a little bit. And proceed, okay. And straighten out my strand again. Still following the lead strand. over under and again over and under over and under Ooh. keep going Enjoy the awkward silence. Twisted. If I could just learn to hold everything in front of the camera, it'd be a lot easier. Sorry about that. Continuing on. Still have our twists in it. So let me try to get this straightened out. Okay. Still following the lead strand. This is a time-consuming knot. This is a good hour-long knot, in my opinion. If you take your time and do it right, it shouldn't take any less than an hour. Including the foundation, that is, I should say. For me personally, this knot takes at least an hour to do. But I take I like to take my time on them.
And here is the final pass. And then we'll be switching over to our highlight color. So as soon as we finish this up, over under, we're going to even things out again just like we did a few minutes ago. All right. So there we go. Now here we go. Let's even things out again. Let's push these to the side to make room for that last strand, okay? And let's even things out. We need to make room for that final pass. And as it is, it's going to be a little bit tight there. You see what I should have done for this is extend this foundation a little further down and widen it a little bit, build it up with more artificial sinew because it's going to be a little crowded on this. But I think it's going to be okay. Okay. So we're evening it out. Evening things out. Just like this. Just like this. And if this if this knot foundation was a little bit uh, smaller, you could get away with a two pass knot, okay? But I didn't do that. Alright. So we're gonna pull this. And just as if we are beginning that third pass, we're gonna we're gonna go over, just like these two. And we're gonna stop right here. And at this point, I'm gonna get a pair of scissors. So I've got a pair of scissors here, I've got my lighter ready to go, and I also have cut here, I like to use about a three and a half foot piece of my second highlight color. The highlight color is going to be black. Let's switch over again to our knot foundation, or our knot. And this part's very important, we're going to take this, like this, you're going to lay it out, mark it with your finger like this. And it will be going under here, as you can see, the two. We're going to follow the lead strand again on the right side. So this strand will end here. All right. So we want to just measure where it will be. And it'll be under here. Okay. So between these two strands, you want to mark it with your fingernail and cut it there. All right. Take your other strand, and this is a point you're going to want to just trim the end of it just to get it so it's even like this. Okay, and now we're actually going to fuse these two pieces together. And this is how we'll do this. I'm going to grab my lighter with one hand, hold everything, and we're going to fuse these together by just melting the two ends of the strands at one time. Holding them together like this, sorry, and then I'm going to pinch these to flatten them. Do it quickly, you'll burn your fingers. And you can see that they are fused together. Now don't go pulling on this because two different uh, opposite colors, they don't, like to, uh, they don't like to stick to each other, so you can't easily break this bond. So we're gonna, as you can see here, um, the edges are not very smooth. So we're gonna trim these edges here just to neaten it up, make it slide underneath the other strands. All right. Got one. Trim the other side. Just so it slides underneath the knot easily, okay? Take our other end and thread it into our needle. Take the old piece out, throw it out, and singe that end, which I have actually already done here. All I need to do is thread it into my needle. And we're going to continue like nothing ever happened. Okay? Look at this. This is the beautiful thing about this. Pretend that red just keeps continuing, but it isn't red anymore. It's black. 
So once again, follow the leader. Except this time we have two examples to follow. We're going to follow them both on the right side again. Over, under the two. Just like this. All right, now be delicate here. When you pull the strands, don't force it through. Take your needle, and where you fuse it together, there's gonna to be a little bump there. What I like to do is take my needle under here and just raise it up, just to make a tunnel for it. And when you pull it, make a little bit better of a tunnel there and just pulling it through and now as you can see the transition between the red and the black is concealed by these two strands and hopefully you'll never see that bond again okay so let's just continue with our follow the leader game follow our two strands up we go to the top okay And this is going to be a three pass knot over and under to the top. Take some time to just spread these out a little bit to make room for that final pass. Okay. And continue. Okay. So there we go. You can see that highlight coming out. And I love this um, this little pattern. I call it I call it lightning bolt pattern. I didn't by any means come up with it or anything. Um, Whipmakers have been doing it for who knows how long. But that's just I didn't know what to call it, so I call it a lightning bolt pattern because it reminded me of a lightning bolt. And uh, it's really it's really a neat pattern. It's um, it just makes the knot look more interesting. Really, I mean, knots are interesting in and of themselves, but doing this. In my opinion, really brings out the contrast, and I'm all about brightness and contrast. Okay, and keep on going. Follow the leader. This is going to be cool. lead strand. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. So you can see what it's starting to look like. Isn't that cool? Look at that. And the hardest part about doing this is the strand keeps twisting. And I don't know of a way to keep it untwisted other than when I do a pass, I put it in my teeth and hold that same position without and try not to twist it, but it just keeps getting twisted anyway. So if anybody's out there and you can tell me a way to keep it from doing this, please let me know because I'd love to know. Okay. I'm going to keep going. Under, and I'm following the leader. I'm doing exactly what I did, except I'm following two strands instead of one. Under over. 
It's still following that lead strand up to the top again. Good way to get rid of the unwanted twists. Hold it and just guide them, th guide them through firmly like that. See that? I'll show you what I mean. Pull it through like that. So now you can see the pattern is taking shape. Red and black are probably a couple of my favorite two color combinations on a whip. I don't know, something about it, especially when you wax it, it's just, it's got this shine to it. It just looks right, you know, it just looks right. Look at that horrible twist. strands. Check out that link right there. Um, if you're interested in weather photography, landscape photography, um, a lot of cool pictures out there. If you want to click that and check it out. Uh, I'm also a storm chaser and weather photographer. And uh, if you're into that, science, weather, extreme weather, I think you'll enjoy it. So take a look. Okay, we're continuing down through here. Okay. So as you can see here, we got two more passes to make. And isn't that cool though? Isn't that a neat pattern? And as you can see, it's kind of overlapping the edges of the coin. It is kind of engulfing it a little bit. But you can pull this out with your fingers when we're done. And uh, just to make sure that enough of it is exposed, okay? Second to last pass, guys, and this knot will be done. All we'll have to do left after that is uh, shape it a little bit with a roller. Look at that. And it'll be done. This knot um, ended up being a little bit crowded. Uh, strands are sort of just overlapping each other a little bit. And uh, that's just me just kind of rushing it a little bit, I guess. I'm having to do this knot at a bunch of weird angles that I'm not used to because of the camera, so it's a little sloppy.
No more excuses. I just made a sloppy nod today. How about that? And here is our final pass, guys. It's a little stubborn sometimes around when you're coming up to the top. Just don't jam it through or else you'll rip the thread out of the paracord and it'll really make it look sloppy. Here's the last one. Look at that. Here it goes. And descending back down to the bottom. Over and under. And to finish it off, we're going to go almost like we're starting a fourth pass, but we'll end it short over, push these over, I'm going to go under, and that is it. I'm going to cut this, pull that real tight, pull that final pass pretty tight here, and then grab this the strand here, give that a nice tight pull, time to cut it, cut it short right here, cut the other one short right here, and singe those areas here. I'm gonna do this little offset because I don't want the heat that close to my lens. I'm gonna offset it a little bit. And I'm just singeing this lightly. Pressing it to seal it. Ah, it's hot. Of course it's hot. Sealing this in with my finger. And there you go, guys. Let's take a look at this. It's overlapping a little more than I than I liked it to. I expected it to be a little. And that's just, when you start the knot, pull that first pass that you do. Pull it down a little more. And uh, it won't uh, cover up your concho as much. But there's your knot. There's a 7x6 Turk's Head knot. Three pass, lightning bolt pattern. And we're just going to roll this real quick and we'll be done. So we're going to put the finishing touch on this knot I'm using my fifth grade math book to roll <laughs> this knot here. Even a little knot perimeter just like that. So here you go guys, 7x6 Turk said knot, 3 pass knot, lightning bolt pattern, rolled and ready to go. Thank you guys for watching, I hope you learned something. Uh, the dress is white and gold. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.